Can you filter your homebrew for less than 20 bucks? Okay, recently a viewer told me about a product that he got from Amazon that was a one micron filter. And he said, well, yeast are three, three to five microns, so it should filter out yeast. And he also said that he doesn't have to rack more than once, it gets rid of lees, it does everything. But the biggest thing was he doesn't pasteurize anymore and he doesn't need any chemical stabilization because of that. So I thought, well, that sounds a little too good to be true. So let me order these things and find out. So I went on Amazon. There's actually quite a bit, but I found some and we got two of these for, I think it was like $14. Okay. They are reusable. It's made of a poly material, so it doesn't even stain. You can sanitize them. But here's the thing. They're a little odd shaped, so they're kind of a weird thing. You probably have to do it into a pitcher or something. But if this works, this is kind of amazing, you know, because it would solve a lot of steps. It would solve a lot of problems. I'm dubious, but I want to think it'll work. My biggest fear with anything like this is that when we put a liquid in there, it's going to take forever to come out. That's the problem with coffee filters and things like that. Even though they don't actually get small enough to filter the things out, they can't actually let the liquid pass through quickly. So we have here Turbos, which is also known as... The Red Bucket of Sanitization! You got, you got in the jazz hands. <laughs> I got jazz handed. <laughs> Um, and that is literally a bucket filled with sanitization liquid, which th today's a brew day for us. It's the first video of the day. So this is just a clean bucket with sanitization fluid in there. What? I got, I got handed jazz. <laughs> so the first test is I want to just scoop up water and see how quickly water goes through it. Okay. So here we go. Are we ready? Do we need a drum roll or anything? I'm so. just going to drop it in and pick it up. That's fairly quick. Um, there's still liquid in there. So let me see, just on a second pass here. That's pretty good. Like I can see the level going down here. I'll, I'll, I'll move my finger as it goes. Yeah, it's going down pretty quick. I would say that is a usable speed, okay? It might not be the fastest, but it is certainly usable. Now, my concern with that is that once it gets clogged with all the stuff it's filtering out, that speed is going to diminish significantly. And it's going to. Significantly. So you may end up having to do it a few times. Now, my question is, does doing that, like cleaning it out and all that, does that negate the benefit? And is that better than pasteurizing still? Only one way to find out. Let me just wring this out a little bit. Okay, so now we have a half gallon fermenter that we just sanitized. I'm not sure why we sanitized it because we're probably not going to be keeping anything that we do with this test anyway. But, well, you never know. But it's habit and it's a good habit to have. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the filter that has been, now it's been sanitized. It was in turbos. And I'm just going to kind of put it in here. And normally we would be siphoning a liquid from something to this. Today, we're going to pour it because it's just so much faster. And as I said, we're either going to consume this quite quickly or we're not keeping it. So what do we have as our contestant today? Today's contestant, Brian, is tea wine. This was brewed back in 9-11-2020. So it is three years old. And it's 11.3% ABV. And it's cloudy as... All get out. I was thinking that, but I didn't say it. See? There's also some goop on the bottom. And you know what? Let's, just... let's just, you know... Get it moving around in there. Oh yeah, that that's, is that is that's that not... is not attractive looking at all. <laughs> but that's part of the test because the idea is you should be able to rack off and lees yeast cake everything all... does not go through. Right. Okay. So I'm dubious. If we were in a larger vessel, we would have to prop this up. But we have this little yeah, like strap. Put it in our pitcher. So we could just could put, put a. Put a dowel or a well, grab wooden the, spoon. Well, grab the or... picture and let's, let's show them. Or don't. So you put it in the pitcher, right? And then we could just grab like the, the paddle and go like that. And ta-da. Ta-da. Yeah, it'll work. Trust me. That's why I got the one that had the handle. Okay, but in this, I'll, I'll just be holding it in place more or less. Okay. A lot of talk about nothing here, but whoops, the seal came off. <laughs> that happens. The seal was working, but yeah. it was it was holding. Yeah. Okay, so as you can see, this is very cloudy. There's goop floating in it. Let's see how this thing does. 
Now we know the way we're doing it right now, we're going to completely oxygenate this brew. Yeah. And we're fully aware of that. So This is just a, t a theory. We're just testing it to see if it works at all. Right. And so if you were doing this for real, you would not want to do it this way. And I'm lifting this up a bit so you can actually see. See how slow that's going? That's the problem. As it actually hits the sides and gets full Wait, you of don't, gunk. You don't want to lift it up too much. Right? No, because it'll pour right out on yeah. me. Um, it's working. It's a little slower than I really want. Oops, see, I'm filling it up here. It's slower than I want. Like, I cannot imagine doing a whole gallon this way. It's still cloudy. Yeah. Not as, as, said, not as cloudy, I'm, but it's still cloudy. I said I was dubious. All right, I'm going to hold this because you're making Please. me nervous the way you keep pulling it up. Okay. So you see what I have to do. I can only pour it so fast because it's just not coming out as fast as I would like. Um, and this is only one bottle. I, I'm, I'm thinking this might not be all that great of an idea. I mean, it comes out. Okay, so that's the whole bottle. First thing, as Derica said, it's still cloudy. I don't think it took care of that at all. There's a lot of goop on the sides inside the filter. It's a little disappointing. I really wanted this to work, even though I was very dubious about it. I, I, I really wanted this to work. Maybe I've done something wrong. It's not exactly a definitive test here, but I would say that's done. Can you, let's just get the, here, I'll hold this. You grab the pitcher. Notice it's still dripping out. That, that's a little troublesome, but there is a whole bunch of sediment in the bottom here. So here's what I'm thinking. I'm gonna take this over to the sink. I'm gonna turn it inside out. I'm gonna clean it all out. And we're gonna re, you know, restart it in sanitizer fluid. I wanna filter this again, just to see can we make it cleaner the second time around? So just to get it to the sink, I'm gonna do this. Okay, so I washed this out um, just briefly in the sink. I have to say it does come pretty clean. There's a little bit of discoloration, but I'm sure with a little bit more scrubbing, I probably could have got it to come totally clean. It doesn't turn inside out super easily, but it does actually turn inside out. Okay, so we're demonstrating the um, technique here. I'm, I'm still- be tricky for yeah, you. Yeah, not... you might have to like hold it up until it gets going. Like just hold it in place. Here, just do this. Again, we would normally not pour. We would normally fill, you know, uh, use a siphon. But for this, it's also to show you how fast it comes through. See, when there's no sediment, it goes through a lot faster. So it really does run like water, which as you'd expect, there's less things for it to uh, have to worry about. But it is still taking a little bit to run all the way through. What's that, like 20 seconds, 30 seconds for one yeah, model? That was no big deal. Really. So that's probably not as big of a deal. My thing is, it did not clear it at all. This is, this is so not clear. Let me just pour this back in. I don't need this thing. Let me just pour it back into here just so you could see it. It didn't clear it at all. Now, we don't, there's one big thing that we don't know, and that's, did it remove yeast? And we just wanted to get this done real fast and show you guys, but we are actually gonna test this on a recipe where we're gonna take an active fermentation and remove some through the filter and see if it removes yeast. Because if it does that, that at least stops you from having to pasteurize or to add, you know, uh, stabilizers at all. But as a clarifying agent or method of clearing, no, it doesn't work. I mean, you saw it right there. It, well, at least it doesn't work for this particular brew. Maybe that's true. Maybe there are smaller than one micron particulates in our tea wine. We don't know. I can't measure them. <laughs> yeah, true. But one micron is really, really small. Um, and I'm afraid if we went a smaller micron size that now the water won't just flow through. So it has its caveats. I, I cannot recommend it at this time. That's the best thing that I can say. Further research will be necessary. But as always, guys, Thanks so much for watching and have a great day. Bye-bye.